the Swindon foyer. Hi, Tanya. Oh, thank you. Um, I will share my presentation. Um, two seconds. Um, I don't know if anybody can see that screen. Not yet. No, OK, let's have another go. Um, bear with, sorry, I can't seem to. There we go. Can everybody see that? I don't see anything yet. OK, we're not doing too well so far. Um, let me try. Ah, oh, here we go. Can everybody see that? Yeah, it's coming. Hold on. There you go. Well done. You're there. Go ahead, please. Lovely. Wonderful. Thank you. OK, so I'm Tanya Barker. I'm the locality manager for Stonewater supported housing department. Um, I cover a range of directly managed and agency managed projects, but ranging from Bristol all the way to Newbury and Oxford. Um, Swindon falls right in the middle of that. Um, so we've got Stonewater are a supported, a social housing provider with a mission to deliver good quality, affordable homes to people whose needs meet them most. We manage around 32,500 homes in England for over 70,000 customers, including affordable properties for general rent, shared ownership and sale, alongside specialist accommodations such as retirement and supported living schemes for older and vulnerable people, domestic abuse refuges, and a dedicated LGBTQ plus safe space and young people support. So we have over 800 employees, all embodying our values, being ambitious, passionate, agile, commercial and ethical, all of which contribute to our customer promise of we are proud to make things personal. If it matters to our customers, it matters to us. Our ambitious housing programme aims to build a minimum of 1500 new homes every year from 2022 to 2023. And we have a good pipeline of development to achieve this, driven by our vision of everybody having an opportunity to have a place they call home. We plough our surplus into building new homes and improving existing housing stock and investing in customer services. So our vision and values, um, our vision is for everyone to have an opportunity um, to have a place that they can call home. And I think in the last year, it's been more evident that that has been a focus of importance for everybody. Um, our mission is to offer good quality homes and services for people whose needs are not met by the open market and specifically supported housing does fall into that. We've seen some fantastic achievements in a relatively short space of time since Stonewater was formed in January 2015. So our supported housing service, um, Stonewater has been offering a number of supported housing um, services, um, both accommodation based and floating support models. Um, our supported living team employs over 80 passionate and dedicated colleagues supporting the following specialist services. So young people anywhere between 16 and 25, those fleeing domestic abuse, those with mental health needs and those with learning disabilities. A large number of our supported living services are commissioned by local authorities, as they are in Swindon. We also work with, var with various funding partners, including the Longley Foundation, who provides funding for our South Hampshire win Women's Refuge and, an, uh, and our innovative LGBTQ plus safe space. In addition, we have a number of agency services where Stonewater deliver the accommodation and our support providers provide the day-to-day -day care and support for customers. We're also the chosen accommodation provider for a number of housing first initiatives around the country. So for supported accommodation in Swindon, we've been delivering support services and accommodation in Swindon for a number of years now. We have 14 independent flats for young people with outreach support only. And this is where customers would have entered into Stonewater via um, the foyer or through our, our, some of our other projects and where they've progressed on and they're exiting their journey out into complete independence. We have a 57 bed young people foyer. Um, again, they're for people aged between 16 and 25. Some are care leavers, some are 
having family breakdowns and they've come in and they're in for a relatively short space of time. Some people come in and they can be in, in the foyer for a number of years. We have 14 high support need bed spaces. So this is delivered across two projects where the support that that young person would need is more intensive. We have 16 um, bed unit for those with mental health. And we have a, a 25 independent flats for those with learning disabilities, which is lovely. It's like a, a gated little community. In Swindon alone, we have a staff team of 25 highly skilled specialist coaches in Swindon, and we provide intensive support using the strength based approach and are committed to providing a psychologically informed environment. Customers receive coaching around life skills, education, training and employment, well-being, safety and relationships. Our ultimate goal is to prepare customers to move on to greater independence. So I think it's fair to say that none of us could have could have predicted how the last year would have looked. And, and like Emma, uh, sorry, like Julie, our focus has shifted onto keeping everybody safe and focusing more on the COVID-19 pandemic and what we can do to keep our customers safe um, and supported, but also how we can support our staff to keep to, to support our customers. So we've put a range of measures in place and they've included general things like increased cleans. Um, we've changed our staff rotor to prevent infection across all of the staff. We have a designated PPE lead, which isn't so significant now, but right in the beginning of the pandemic, there was such a shortage on PPE. And we have regular best practice sessions where we talk about what the latest restrictions are, what the latest statistics are and how we can implement practices and measures to keep people safe. We've shifted on to using digital platforms to support our customers rather than the traditional face to face um, support sessions and feedback from our customers is that they actually prefer that new model rather than sitting in an office or or going out in the community. They actually are enjoying use, the use of digital platforms. Early on during the pandemic, we created an activities calendar um, and that was designed really to keep customers entertained while they're in their rooms um, or they're in their properties. Um, and it was a fantastic piece of work. And again, it was something that we shared with all providers um, because it was very general. It was things that were online and, and was accessible to, to, to all people. Um, we've provided equipment to ensure that customers have access to online activities. So we've sourced laptops and smartphones and tablets. Uh, we've had crafting competitions and some of them have been absolutely incredible. In our mental health project, we've had a butterfly project. So as you walk in, the walls are covered with butterflies, which has really lifted both the customers and the staff. Um, we've brought ex extra provisions for those that are having to self-isolate. So where they're in a project of multi-occupancy and there would be shared facilities such as microwaves and kettles and things where customers need to self-isolate, whether they've displayed symptoms, they've had a positive test or they've been contacted through, contacted through NHS Track and Trace. We've brought additional things that they can comfortably isolate in their rooms. Um, we've sent out regular customer comms to keep everybody updated on what the latest restrictions are. And we've, able, we've been able to adapt those to meet the target, target audience um, of the project. So um, they've been very visual for the young people. Um, they've been further adapted for those with learning disabilities. So it's really easy readable and everybody's really aware of what the latest restrictions are. As you can imagine, in a 57 bed young people's foyer, um, keeping young people self-isolating or keeping young people, you know, in line with the restrictions has been a bit like herding kittens at times. And we're sitting between young people um, completely breaching the rules and, you know, very dismissive of the pandemic between those uh, and those that are quite anxious, um, certainly anxious about the unlock and going out. So where our support is very tailored into individuals needs and where they're sitting in terms of anxieties and what their support needs are. Now, we did have an official outbreak in one of our projects. Uh, we managed to contain that to just three staff members. 
um, and that was in the 57 bed foyer. Um, it was three staff members, so it was classed as an official outbreak. Uh, we gained some really positive feedback from our commissioners and from Public Health Swindon on how we managed that. Two minutes, please. Yep, no problem. So to give you an idea of a few success stories, um, we've had a clear increase um, that did not decline during the COVID pandemic of those that are in employment, education and training. And in our most recent quarter, uh, we exceeded our target of 60%. And a lot of this can be attributed to online courses. Um, we've got 100% of our customers are actively engaging with their coach on their support plan. Uh, we have a young person that left our foyer to embark on a university course in Amsterdam. We had one customer with a lot of support needs around his application for right to remain and we've successfully secured that within the last week. We've had eight positive move ons from our outreach projects within the last year and given that we've been in the middle of a pandemic, that's quite an achievement. Uh, we've had a resident become a peer mental health support for fellow customers and we've had a young person completing a health and social care level two NVQ during the pandemic, which has resulted in her securing a paid role within the care sector. Moving forward, uh, we're keen to engage as many customers as possible to help shape how we deliver our services. Um, I was recently tasked with designing a young people's a young person's surface offer. And after a series of focus groups, a customer uh, presented their design to our head of supported living and some of our directors. And this has resulted in us nominating that customer for a TPAS award for inspirational young tenant of the year. Uh, we also have a selection of our customers that were part of the recruitment panel for our head of customer voice and offering valuable feedback on their insight as a customer, which resulted in the successful appointment of the candidate. And we really do look forward to working with her in the coming weeks and months. So any questions? So that's absolutely fantastic. A huge amount of work you're all doing, Tanya. Um, amazing. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Um, I, 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 I wasn't getting the slides coming through. Would you be able to send me through the slide set that I can share with everyone? Yeah, of course, of That's course. That's great. And I'm, I'm actually going to, what we're doing is, as you know, with the VX directory, we're putting the, the video clips of these recordings, but we're also putting the slide set as well, so that, because I think that would be really useful. So huge thanks. Let me open it up to the floor then. And um, any questions for Tanya? And how you have time to use to use to use your busy kit your beautiful kitchen? <laughs> that, it looks very splendid. Thank you. Yeah, questions, please. I've got a hand up, and if I can, I, from Melanie, please. Yeah. Hiya. Yeah. I found that very informative. I've actually gone past the foyer a few times, but I didn't realise how big it was. Um, is there specific? Is it a mixed uh, mixed building, or is it for one sex? Yeah, it's a mixed building, so 57 beds, mixed building. Um, our two smaller projects that I was talking about that are higher um, intensive support needs, they are single sex, so we've one for male, one for female. But please do contact me afterwards. I'd be more than happy to, once restrictions allow, be more than happy to bring you in and, and give you a tour around and meet some staff and the team and some customers. Yeah, that would be, that'd be lovely. And I was also thinking, like, if there are little bits and pieces that you need for some of the people to move on, maybe um, we can support you by offering you bits and pieces from the shop. Oh, that would be lovely. That would that would be because I mean it works both ways, doesn't it? Absolutely. So yeah, that's no problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's excellent. Thank you. And there's one in the chat, um, Tanya, that says, "What's your referral process, especially for the disabilities flats?" Okay. So for the disabilities flats and for, for all of our commission services, um, they would go through the placements team at Swindon Borough Council. That's a simple answer, thank you. Any more? Okay, well, look, um, it's been it's been another busy morning and so I appreciate a big appreciation to all of you. Uh, Tanya, thanks again for joining us. So for all the speakers, uh, organisations from this morning and all the people who've joined to listen in, ask their questions. Um, 
Yeah, these videos are all being uploaded pretty much daily by the wonderful Rachel Hobbs from Voluntary Action Swindon, who's you know with us um, uh, in the background somewhere there. So thank you, Rachel, for that. And so, yeah, tomorrow is is our last day. We've got another eight organisations presenting. Same story, we're kicking off at 9.30, so please feel free to join. I'll send out the uh, join link um, later today. And uh, that's it. Have a nice lunch break and enjoy the rest of your day. And thanks again for joining. Bye bye. Bye.